Welcome back to Midnight Machine Shop. In today's video, we're gonna get the cooling stack, which is the radiator and coolers, back in this Humvee and get fluids back into it so we can start it and check it for leaks. So to install the radiator, I'm first gonna remove the power steering and oil cooler. And it's really tight. For as expensive as this is, I definitely don't wanna break it. And I realize it just shifted. Other people can, I guess, move it out of the way, like using the lines, but I don't really wanna do that. I'd rather take the thing out. And uh, that way I won't bend these fittings on the cooler itself. And now with the lines loose, I can just lift it out. It is not light. And for the time being, I'm just putting some plugs in there to keep contamination or other stuff. Funny enough, these are actually the caps that came on the fuel injection lines. I saved them and they serve in dual purpose. Trans cooler out. I can see where the lower radiator pipe is. So I'm gonna put some water on it just to help lubricate this thing and get the hose on. Slide it in this way, past the caliper. I've got the clamp on it already. Basically work the thing on now without falling on my face. So in this instance, I'm gonna orient the clamp so that the nut is pointed straight down. That way I can get to it from underneath the truck. If I pointed it up, It'd be easy to get to now, but once the cooling stack is in, it'd be impossible to get loose. That way, if I ever need to change the hose, it's a lot easier to do and I don't have to take the radiator stack out itself. I'm gonna pry out the old lower radiator mount or the rubber isolator. All right, I got a new plan. There we go. I thought I was gonna have to press it in, but just a little bit of WD-40 on there and it just pops right into place. The radiator support needs a new isolator. The isolator is part number 12338338. You can get that from pretty much anywhere. The trick about these is that the radiator sits in here basically vertical, but there's a twist in this thing. The bottom end isn't in plane with this end. The angle matches the outward splay of the airlift hook. What's weird is that this one's marked left. And if I put it the other way, so like on the left, like the driver's side, that would mean it'd be flipped like this and it would be splayed inward, which isn't the way it goes. So I'm not saying that you could discount this, but just double check it and who knows if they were right or what that was going on at the factory that day. Maybe there's a reason for it. To install the bushing, I'm gonna put a, just bit of WD-40 on it just to lubricate it. So I'm not trying to shove it into the hole without any lube. Basically get it started and it'll go as far as the rubber until it gets to the metal insert. From there, I've got a socket that actually fits over the diameter of the insert so it won't drag. With it in the vise, it's just a simple press operation to install that bushing. And I wanna press it in because I don't want the center steel support in the bushing to basically get pounded through. So the result is an evenly pressed in bushing without having to pound on it or tear it up. The aftermarket radiator has a different mounting system that it uses a bolt coming in rather than a stud coming out. You can actually install these supports into the chassis. Normally you'd have to put these on the radiator and then they'd go in as a unit. And then these are just three ace bolts with a washer and I'm using a nylock lock nut rather than the distorted thread ones. I'm not too focused on it being 100% hardware correct. Let's take a quick look at the radiator that we're going to put in this thing. It's from Champion. It's an aluminum unit. And there's some good reviews online of, and videos on YouTube regarding who makes these things and where they come from. Some of them on the market come from the exact same factory and they are wildly different in price. So that's just something to be aware of. Some more things to note about this radiator. This is the CCH VB. It fits the military Humvee. There's a different model that has this water outlet moved over here. And if you accidentally order the wrong one, you need to order a different radiator hose because the Humvee radiator hose is not gonna fit over there. So the radiator shroud's going on next. It drops down on here and 
there are eight bolt holes where it lines up. These metal reinforcing straps kind of go over it. The narrow side goes towards the shroud. Otherwise it wouldn't fit. You can see that it doesn't really fit. Something to note with an aftermarket radiator, this is the standard size screw that's used on the copper brass one. Because of the way the thread inserts are, the screw only engages maybe half a turn. That is not enough threads to keep this thing from pulling out. This one's three quarter. What I'm looking for is to get the screw all the way through that insert. And it's not quite there. So I'm gonna go to a one inch screw. It's interesting, there's NASA manuals that basically tell you that all screws need to go through their nuts or thread inserts, at least a certain percentage. Otherwise it's no good. And for washers under the bolt heads, this is what I'm using, NAS 1149F0463P. They're a reduced diameter. That way when I go to put the bolt in, the washer is not rubbing the side of the shroud, it just drops right in. And then what is probably the stupid idea of stupid ideas, I'm putting this in by myself. Following the instructions in the tech manual, I installed the radiator with the fan shroud attached as a single unit. That all went well until I tried to connect the hydraulic hose that goes to the cooling fan clutch. No matter what I tried, I simply could not get enough grip to connect the quick disconnect coupler. The solution was to take the cooling stack back out and install the shroud, connect the QD coupler, then reinstall the radiator. So I just need to check the clearance around the fan. The tech manual actually has the clearance specs of what's needed on each side, and that's adjusted by moving the supports up and down before bolting them down. It's possible to do it with the hood on and to do it by yourself without messing everything up. But if you do mess everything up, you should have taken the hood off. For the front radiator mount, there's the bolt, a small washer, a medium washer, the rubber mount, a large diameter washer between the rubber mount and the radiator, another small washer, and then the nut. The next step is to check fan shroud clearance and to tighten the mounting bolts down. That way you should have an even amount of clearance all the way around the fan. It's good to come down underneath the truck and just make sure that there's clearance from the fan and the fan shroud all the way around. The manual says you should have about a quarter inch gap and I can easily fit my finger in there so it's more like half or three eighths, so I'm pretty good. With the proper clearance around the fan shroud, let's torque it into place. With the hose nipple installed, I'm just gonna pour some water on it, and then a little in the hose, and then I can slide it on. As you can tell, this isn't the official Humvee mill spec hose adapter, mostly because I already had it. And it's going into aluminum radiator, that's not the official one either, so. Doesn't much matter. This is the side that faces down toward the radiator, so you can't see it once it's installed. And fishing rocks and stuff out, it's just gonna be tedious. It's just a dental pick operation, and some of them will fall all the way through. Kind of tweaking these fins back to being the uniform spacing. So a few minutes worked, and this looks a heck of a lot better than it once did. It's not perfect, but I'm not buying a new one of these because they're super expensive. I'm gonna weasel the cooler back into place. Probably easier to do this with the hood off, but alas, here I am. So that's not the correct bolt for that spot, but it's the bolt that's gonna hold it and keep this thing from falling out. So one thing about aftermarket parts is they don't always fit the same as the factory ones. So this bolt is very, very tight on here. So I'm actually gonna wind up clearancing a little bit with a just Dremel grinding wheel. Now the bolt just goes in nice and easy. So that's fixed. I can now drop the power steering cooler into position. The power steering cooler just sits on these standoffs. The bolt that holds the power steering cooler to the oil cooler to the radiator is a 5 16 like socket head cap screw. So I'm gonna start it and leave it loose. That way if I need to adjust anything around, I can. Because this radiator uses a different style of riv nut, a standard bolt 
out of the parts manual doesn't have much thread engagement with this radiator. So the way to get around that is just use a longer bolt. It's important to get all your parts and take a look at what you have before ordering nuts and bolts and stuff just blindly out of the catalog. So otherwise you wind up with extras that aren't, aren't usable. At this point it's just a matter of reconnecting all the hoses and lines. I'm going to put a tiny amount of anti-seize on the threads of this fitting. That way if I ever have to take it apart it'll come apart easier. I'm avoiding getting it on the ceiling surface because that's meant to just be a metal to metal contact. I don't want anything in there. So I'm going to pull the plug out of the line. Just make sure the mating surface is clean. And then position this to start the threads by hand and make sure that it goes by hand. And on a fitting like this, you need both wrenches. That if I just try to tighten this with just relying on that tube, I would kink it right off. To get the radiator hose to install to the fill net, to the radiator outlet, I've got to get the radiator hose back at least another inch and a half. So it is possible to work the hose back a ways, but the hose has a bend in it, so it can't go back that far. But I was able to do it, then get the lower hose to actually go onto the radiator output. For sealing the water neck and thermostat, it comes with a paper gasket. Now, I'm not just going to use the paper gasket. I'm going to use Ultra Gray Gasket Maker and just apply it to the surface. And I'm just going to spread it with my finger just to get a nice kind of uniform coating on there. And with the way everything's assembled, the gasket goes on this side of the thermostat. So the thermostat then itself will drop down this way. And it'll sit like that. With the water outlet, just be sure to move the hose out of the way and then get it into place. And then these bolts go in. According to the instructions, you only put the bolts in finger tight and let the RTV set up for an hour and then come back and torque it. Otherwise what happens is you wind up just squeezing all the RTV out of the joint, it doesn't do you any good. I did test the thermostat before putting it back in. I grabbed a pan of water, heated it with a thermometer in it, and watched the thermostat open and close. So I'm fairly confident in it. The upper radiator hose slides on easy enough. Once again, don't forget to put the clamps on it before you put the hose on. Before I can start the engine, I need to put fluid back in the power steering system. Now on a Humvee, the fluid for everything, transmission, transfer case, it's all automatic transmission fluid. It's the DEX-3, not the newest stuff, but if you go to a parts store, you can find it. The next step in this process is to literally turn the steering from one side to the other 40 times. And I don't know if that means 40 times, that's one, and this is two, or if over, back, and over is one. So 40 or 80, here we go. As the wheels are turned, you can actually see the fluid level moving around in the sight glass. Essentially what's going on is the steering box is pumping fluid through the system and then it tells you to pause at each end of the travel and then go back. And now the fluid level is actually dropping in the sight glass. Start it up and check for any leaks. With it running, the fan and clutch can be checked for proper operation. The tech manual also has a procedure for booting air out of the cooling system. And periodically keep an eye on the gauges just to be sure things are where they should be. Thanks for watching.